Well, praise the Lord. So good to be able to come to you once again by means of this little video and probably have toboggan hair. I had my hat on just a few minutes ago. It's still kind of chilly here. Uh, but I had a couple of scriptures uh, that I wanted to share with you today uh, that really, really bless my heart. And whenever I read them, uh, you may not see the context until I'm done. But I'm pretty sure that by the time I'm done, it will begin to make sense to you. And the first one is Romans chapter 3, verse number 4. He said, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Now, again, as you read through that, it may not make a lot of sense to you, but I was talking to a friend of mine this morning from uh, West Virginia, and I had a memory pop up in my mind that related to this scripture. You know, there are a lot of people uh, who get in problems and get in trouble and situations, and when that trouble comes, it kind of reminds me when I was a young boy, we used to ride horses a lot in the mountains. And sometimes that horse would encounter a rock that was slippery and would begin to go down. He would lose his balance. And because there was a fear of falling in our life, uh, the rider's life, many times what we did is we pulled back on the reins. And I thought, man, how applicable is that to spiritual things? You say, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, sometimes we forget to let God have control. He said, let God be the truth and every man a liar. And because when that horse would stumble and begin to go down, we would try to pull back thinking, man, I can guide him or pull him in the right direction and get out of this without having to fall and have a bad accident. But my daddy and others around would always yell, give him his head. In other words, ease up on the reins and let him get up on his own. He knows what he's doing. And if you will ease up and let him have his head, then you won't have to worry about going down. And I thought, man, you know, that applies to our life sometimes because in spiritual things, many times when trouble comes, the first thing the flesh wants to do is tighten up on the reins. Or the Bible says that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And sometimes what we do is we think, well, I'm in trouble, but maybe I can guide myself out of this situation. The Bible says uh, that it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. So let's not lean to that seam right way and tighten up so much that we end up going on down and falling. But if we would just let God be the truth and every man a liar, you'd be surprised what God can do in a situation maybe that seems shaky to you, or maybe you're wondering about, uh, am I going down? Is this it? Am I going to fall? Am I going to be involved in an accident? The Bible says that God has not given unto us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And you'd be surprised if you start running references how many times that let God will show up in the New Testament. And I actually even like Colossians 3 and 15 that says, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. In other words, you've got to let him do that. You know, sometimes the biggest opposition that we have is not Satan, but it's self. You know, because we have that way that seemeth right. And we think, man, if I can just, you know, tighten up on the reins or steer in the right direction, I can avoid this catastrophe that seems so imminent in my life. In other words, I, I feel like I'm falling, but if I just tighten up and we begin to draw back a little bit. But you know what? I believe it's so important today, and I believe God really dealt with me about this to my friend, that if we would just let God have control, if we would just ease up on the reins and quit trying to steer it in the direction we think is right, uh, amen, we would see more victory because so many times uh, in my life as an own personal testimony, I thought, man, I needed to go this way and end up getting in a bigger mess. Or maybe I thought that I should go this way and end up making a bigger mess of things. But I've come to tell you today that if we would let God be the truth, if we would let the peace of God rule, let, let that one little word. I'm telling you, it's about 
uh, it's stirring me. It's about to make me want to shout, let, just let God, just let God, just be still and know that he's God. But so many times, you know what we do? We get in a form and a fashion and we think, man, I got to do it this way. And, uh, you know, that I've got to do something, you know, uh, friend, it's about him. It's about his ability. It's not about what I can do. It's about what he, you know, will do in me and through me and in my situation. And so many times I can remember as a young boy riding that horse and man hit that slick rock and that horse you, you would think was going down. But if you could just ease up on the reins, you'd be surprised how quickly that animal would regain its balance and everything would be just fine. But when you begin to pull back out of fear and you begin to draw back, then it makes it more difficult for him to regain his balance. And so many times, the biggest opposition of allowing God to do a work in our life is us because we're trying to draw back. And that may not have made much sense to you this morning, but uh, I'm telling you, it thrilled my heart when God brought that thought into my life because I, I don't know about you. You know, I'm going to be honest and say there have been a lot of times I've tried to draw back and tried to steer things in a certain direction. I even remember one time many years ago, I'll say this in close, but uh, I had a financial need in my life at that time. And we were getting ready to go overseas and it was a very serious thing. Souls were involved and man, I'm crying and I'm praying each and every night. And uh, we were in a revival and we were trying to focus on the revival. And I went to the mailbox, never even looked at my mail because I never assumed that my answer would come from that direction. And, uh, you know, every day I'm praying and I'm crying and I ended up getting the answer to my prayer for two weeks and didn't even know that I had it because I never took time to open it. I was expecting it to come from another direction. I was expecting it to come from a way that, you know, that I assumed that it would happen. And so, you know, after a while, I felt so, so, uh, so bad that I'd had it for so long and never even realized that I had it because I just wasn't looking in the right direction. So I pray this will give you something to think about today, something to consider, amen, to uh, not pull back on the rain so hard so much and end up making things more difficult, but just like they would yell, just give him his head, just, just let him be, amen, what he's going to be and watch God work in your life. Let God be the truth and every man alive. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Just let it. Somebody said, but how, how, how many times should I pray? How, what should I do? Well, just let God be the truth. Just let God be God and watch what he'll do in your life. Now, I know he said you have not because you ask not. I know that there are some things that we have to do, but sometimes, you know, we try to pinpoint it down to a program. You know, you go into a lot of places and they think, uh, uh, 12 steps to spiritual victory or, you know, do it like this. Or uh, even in a revival one time, I remember, man, one night we were there and as soon as they began to sing, the Spirit of God fell and it was wonderful. Things happened. People got saved before there was really even any preaching or anything that was done. But then the next night, people had that memory. People had that uh you know, that uh, idea in their mind. And so at about five after seven, people begin to look and, hey, it wasn't happening the way it did last night. So you know what they did is they took that song they started out with last night and they sung it like 10 times trying to think they could make it happen like they did the night before. But see, it wasn't about the song. It was about the sovereignty of God, just letting God be be God. So uh, I pray this encourage you today. May God bless you. And I hope you got something out of this. Have a good day.